The moon landing of July 20th, 1969, is one of humanity's most remarkable moments. The moon was no longer such an enigma, but it has remained a fascination. Just recently, a miles-long object was discovered on this Earth's friendly neighbor by the James Webb Space Telescope. This discovery has caused some distress about what it could be and how it got there. What could this miles-long structure be? Does it threaten the moon and, by extension, planet Earth? What other amazing discoveries lay on our beloved lunar body? Join us in this video as we attempt to unravel this strange miles-wide object that the James Webb Telescope captured on the moon. The moon's importance to the Earth and, by extension, human life cannot be underestimated. The moon is the brightest star in our night sky, and its light is indispensable to survival. It ensures the Earth stays on its axis and does not wobble. The result of this is the stable climate we enjoy. It is also responsible for the movement and strength of the tides. If the moon accidentally moved closer to the Earth, this would result in monstrous tides and global flooding. If the moon moved further away, the tides would become non-existent. The moon is about a third of Earth's size and is situated about 238,855 miles away from the Earth. The dark side of the moon has always been an enigma to scientists and astrophysicists. Scientists have been working hard to uncover secrets lurking in the moon's shadows. In 2019, China's Chang'e 4 spacecraft became the first to land on the other side of the moon. A rover, U-22, also tagged along with the Chang'e spacecraft on this voyage. What these multi-million dollar devices uncovered was nothing like anyone had ever seen. It was also unlike anything else on the moon's surface. Scientists believe the object could be a fragment of the moon's mantle. The moon's mantle is the layer between the moon's crust and core. It is made of dense, heavy rocks packed with iron and magnesium. If this strange object is simply a piece of the moon's mantle, it would be an incredible discovery, as it would provide an avenue for us to learn more about the inner workings of our beloved moon and the geological processes that formed the celestial body. Some individuals, however, have a different idea about the whole thing. These conspiracy theorists believe that the unknown structure James Webb Telescope captured could be a sign of hidden structures on the dark side of the moon. Perhaps they feel that some lunar civilization inhabits the moon's dark side. However, that's not all there is to this mysterious miles-wide structure. Along with this discovery, scientists found some mysterious swirls on the moon's surface. These swirls possessed a light-colored pattern that gave the semblance of colored swirls against a dark surface. Scientists believe that these swirls are formed as a result of the moon's gravitational forces interacting with the solar winds. It is worth noting that these swirls were found only on the moon's near side. A do not cross the line sign, maybe. If all the oddities mentioned above have not sparked your interest, perhaps this next bit of space gossip will. It was also reported that during the Apollo 10 mission of 1969, a mysterious hum could be heard in the distance. Astronauts Eugene Cernan and John Young heard the strange sound while exploring the moon's far side. The astronauts described the humming as a sort of whistling or woo-woo sound. They claimed that the sound lasted for about an hour. NASA concluded that the sound was likely some radio interference, but trusted the conspiracy theorists to stir up some shenanigans. Conspiracy theorists believe that the humming resulted from alien activity on the moon. However, with the moon being Earth's closest neighbor, if there had indeed been life on the moon, don't you think we would have been privy to that information by now? However, we cannot completely discard that theory as nonsense. The moon's dark side is shielded from the Earth by the moon itself. Check this, the moon blocks radio waves from reaching the Earth. This means that if an intelligent species had lived on the other side of the moon, we would have no way of knowing about it, at least not with our current technology. The moon's inhospitable conditions would require a highly intelligent and incredibly advanced species to live there. This would require using some radio waves, and the moon's blocking capabilities would be able to shield them from being detected by our wave detection technology. On the bright side, it also means that they could not spy on us. It's a win-win situation. These strange structures on the moon, however unsubstantiated, have fanned the flames of speculations as to what could be on the dark side of the moon. 
If there were indeed aliens on the far side of the moon, they would need to deploy a satellite to encourage communication with the Earth. Currently, the Chinese satellite Kekiao serves this function by relaying data transmitted between the Chang'e 4 lunar landers and the U-22 rover. Without the Kekiao satellite, we would have no way of receiving data from the rover and any future exploration of the moon's far side. It would require an additional relay of satellites. Some factions, however, believe that some extraterrestrial civilization might be using these types of satellites to spy on Earth. We also cannot dispute that such alien spyware would be difficult to hide, regardless of how advanced such technologies are. Satellites, especially artificial ones, produce a high amount of heat, making them easier to detect with special instruments. An example of this could be taken from the Cold War, which happened decades ago. During the Cold War, some scientists began working on developing radar invisible satellites. They toiled to overcome the problem of excessive heat production to make the satellite less detectable, but the attempts were largely futile. But we have to consider it from another angle. If there were indeed an advanced civilization on the dark side of the moon, they might possess a technology that can cloak the devices used to spy on Earth, allowing them to keep an eye on us for as long as they want. Another spacecraft that has contributed to lunar exploration is the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or the LRO, has been exploring the moon since 2009. The orbiter is equipped with a powerful camera capable of capturing detailed high-resolution images, which it transmits to NASA's planetary data system. The LRO transmits about 155 gigabytes of data daily and is still fully operational despite its age. We detected some interesting phenomena in a recent image sent by the LRO. In one of the images, which looks fairly unremarkable at first glance, the presence of some odd depressions sparks curiosity. The depressions resemble impact craters. These impact craters are not particularly strange, but upon closer inspection, we notice that the craters are located on some dome-like structures. The structures are the Mons Gruituisengama. On its western flank, we can see that the dome appears lighter in the area where the sun's light reflects off the steep slope. By contrast, the eastern side of the Mons Gruituisengama is plunged into shadows due to their elevation. The shadows on the moon are more encompassing than that of Earth. The reason for the difference in shadow tone is the absence of Rayleigh scattering in the Earth's atmosphere. The moon possesses no atmosphere. Therefore, the only light that reaches its shaded regions is mere reflections from its surface. The moon's surface is not the most reflective, so only a small part gets light. Generally, it is very dark with an average albedo of 0.12, which is about the same tone as wet soil. Directly to the dome's east is a shadow cast by the dome. The dome is a towering structure with a slope of up to 20 degrees. The dome also rises to about 1500 above the lunar surface and has a diameter of about 20 kilometers. The size of this dome makes it almost equivalent to the metro area of a decent-sized city. If we zoomed out further on the image, we would observe that a darker and much flatter terrain surrounding the dome. The dome's height allows it to tap some of the light reflecting from the moon's surface. The flat surface, however, can be attributed to basaltic lava flows that flooded the topographic lows of the moon about 4 billion years ago. Zooming out further would show a second dome southeast of the Mons Gruituisen Gamma. This other dome is referred to as the Mons Gruituisen Delta. This is an even bigger dome than Gamma. It towers about 1,800 meters above the lunar surface, which sets it 300 meters above its west side cousin. The dark basalt plain surrounding both domes is part of a vast mare known as the Oceanus Procellarum, or in layman's tongue, Ocean of Storm. The Ocean of Storms covers about 10.5% of the lunar surface. The dome structures are so peculiar. They look a little like islands on an ocean surface. Scientists believe that the Gruithuizen domes, like the Oceanus Procellarum, were formed by ancient lava flows. These structures, however, beg the question of why they were formed instead of having the same flat plane all around. Some clues which can help us unravel the mystery can be found here on Earth. Mount St. Helens, an active stratovolcano located in America's Pacific Northwest. The St. Helens is shaped like a dome. Stratovolcanoes like the St. Helens are formed from pyroclastic flows of silica-rich materials like rhyolite, dacite, or andesite. Once the silica-rich material is expelled from the Earth's crust in a volcanic eruption, the high-viscosity lava moves slowly as it cools, 
hardening into dome-like or conical formations. It is suspected that the lunar domes, like the terrestrial stratovolcanoes, are made of highly silicic material. Recent thermal measurements taken by the LRO's Diviner instrument support this theory, suggesting that, indeed, the materials from which the domes are made differ from that of the surrounding plains. What this suggests is that, unlike the moon's basalt lava, which settled into smooth, low-lying surfaces, the lavas responsible for the creation of the lunar domes extruded slowly, a little like thick molasses, and cooled off, leaving the gigantic domes we see on the moon today. However, what differentiates the lunar domes from Terra stratovolcanoes is this. On Earth, stratovolcanoes like the St. Helens are a product of water and plate tectonics. At the convergence of two tectonic plates, a subduction zone may likely occur where colder and denser material from an oceanic plate is thrust under the less dense plate and back into the Earth's blazing hot mantle. The remelted material results in silica-rich magma, which then rises. Unlike Earth, neither liquid water nor plate tectonics can be found on the Moon. How then was the silica-rich magma which resulted in the formation of the domes made? One explanation suggests that when lunar magma had nearly cooled and crystallized, it left a residual liquid probably rich in silica. The only issue with this theory is that the process, known as fractional crystallization, would only produce small quantities of silicic material. This quantity from this process would be too small to explain the 27-kilometer mammoth that is the Mons Gruithuisen Delta. A second suggestion would be that the silicic materials were formed when basalt magma rose upward, causing lunar rocks to melt and form rhyolites and dacites partially. If that were the case, it would mean that the domes are the same age as the surrounding plains. However, there are no tools with which we can verify the truth of the claim, but maybe sometime in the future, there will be a way we can verify the claim. Future research should also be able to illuminate the chronology and composition of these lunar monoliths. There are many more of these unexplainable lunar phenomena, including the brief and unpredictable flashes or glows of light on the Moon's surface. Astronomers have observed these flashes, with the first observation dating back to the 9th century. Back in the day, these lunar light flashes were called lunar transient phenomena, but sometime in the 20th century, the name changed. These lunar flashing lights remain an enigma even after many centuries of observation. Various theories have emerged over time about the possible causes of these light shows. Some scientists believe that meteoric impacts can cause such flashing lights. When a meteor collides with the moon's surface, it can release energy through light and heat, causing the surrounding area to glow or flash briefly. Others speculate that the shiny lunar lights could result from volcanic activity on the moon. While some believe that the moon is geologically inactive, a few scientists believe there may still be some pockets of molten lava beneath the surface of the moon that occasionally erupt and cause random lunar light shows. If the theory about the lunar light flashes being caused by volcanic activities proves to be true, that discovery is going to be an amazing and welcoming one. Seeing that, at the moment, the moon is believed to be geologically inactive and that any volcanic activities ceased several billion years ago. If, indeed, there are pockets of molten lava beneath the moon's surface, it would mean that the moon is still an energetic celestial body. It could help us better understand the moon's history, as it would shed light on how the moon was formed and its evolution. The discovery of lunar activity could also shed more light on what processes shaped the surface of the moon over time and how it might evolve in the future. If the volcanic activity is relatively recent, it could help explain some of the structures and lunar features that have puzzled scientists for the longest time, such as the presence of certain rocks and minerals. Furthermore, if the volcanic eruptions are indeed recent, it would also mean that they would pose a serious engineering challenge to those who dwell on the moon. Any future eruption would release a large amount of dust and gas into the moon's atmosphere, which could pose a significant health hazard for humans who may then be dwelling on the moon, even if they live inside a fortified base. An eruption could also damage equipment and structures, making it impossible for humans to maintain a lunar base for a long time. Thankfully, the volcanic action theory remains far-fetched, and humanity still has a shot at living on the moon. Another group of scientists believes that light flashes result from extraterrestrial activities. This is the most unrealistic of all the theories, but still a theory nonetheless. They believe that the flashes of light coming from the moon 
result from interdimensional portals being opened up by extraterrestrial beings. While this theory of multiverse hopping aliens is not backed by scientific evidence, they continue to capture many individuals' imaginations. The existence of multiverse hopping aliens entirely fuels some genres in pop culture. NASA, however, plans to send individuals back to the moon by next year through the proposed Artemis program. Rumors are flying around about secret lunar bases on the moon's dark side, but that is all they are. Rumors. It has been discovered that the moon is gradually receding from the Earth one lunar inch at a time each year. With no atmosphere to deflect any impacts, the moon is constantly subjected to a steady rain of asteroids, meteorites, and comets. These celestial rock showers strike the moon's surface, leaving numerous craters behind for billions of years. The moon rotates at the same rate it revolves around the Earth. This process is known as synchronous rotation. The same hemisphere always faces the Earth. During a full moon, the sun illuminates the moon's hemisphere visible to us on Earth. A new moon occurs when the far side of the moon is in full sunlight, while the side which faces us is in darkness. Scientists recently discovered a massive blob on the far side of the moon. This mysterious blob is said to have the mass of a metal pile five times the size of Hawaii's Big Island. The structure is 180 miles beneath the South Pole Aitken Basin. The South Pole Aitken Basin is a large crater punched into the lunar landscape billions of years ago when the moon's initial molten surface had cooled enough for impacts to make a dent in it. The odd blob was found by combining data from NASA's Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory with topography from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. This information has assisted scientists in refining previous calculations for the thickness and depth of the crater's crust and the density of the mantle, revealing the unusual underground mass surplus. Scientists say the blob is most likely related to the crater's formation and maybe the remnants of an ancient impact as a metal core. While the extra mass is not immediately visible from the surface, it appears to be having an impact dragging down the lunar landscape in a strange, elliptical depression that sits a little above half a mile lower than the surrounding crater floor known as the Central Depression. The South Pole Aitken Basin, where this mysterious blob-like object was found, has piqued the interest of many scientists due to its surface composition and size. It is the largest preserved crater in the solar system that we know of, the discovery of the strange structure has only added to the appeal and mystery of this ancient crater. This has made the South Pole Aitken Basin a potential target for future moon explorations and missions. Scientists are looking to explore the mass because understanding it better could aid in demystifying the history of the impact that formed the lunar South Pole Crater. These miles-wide structures are nothing more than lunar geography and natural phenomena that occurred with the formation of the satellite. However, the mystery that shrouds the moon's far side remains an enigma to scientists and astrophysicists. Do you think that there is a secret civilization that lives on the largely unexplored far side of the moon? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen for more quality content like this one.